Welcome back, true believers, to Screen Rant! Now that the dust is finally settling on the endgame hype, the MCU audience has a chance to take in the cinematic marvel. A lot of questions have been raised since the film came out, as well as sparking a lot of theories. As Tony Stark clicked his fingers to reverse Thanos' snap, what did Tony see? Let's get cracking on this Marvel mystery. Before we get into what Tony did, let's take a quick step back to the previous Avengers film, Avengers Infinity War. One of the stones Thanos needed to collect was the Soul Stone, which has a direct connection to the Soul World. When Thanos used the Infinity Gauntlet to snap half of all life out of existence, his consciousness would enter the Soul World. Here, he met with the child version of Gamora. This is the version of Gamora he first encountered on her planet, just before he annihilated her people. To visit the Soul World allowed Thanos to share one last interaction with his adoptive daughter. What did it cost? Which gave him some form of peace to his actions. Afterwards, the Titan's consciousness returned to his body. In the comics, however, Soul World works a little differently. Soul World is closer to being another dimension rather than something that resembles an afterlife like the MCU's version. Instead of a dreamy landscape, it's a dusty, harsh environment. Adam Warlock, a cosmic hero, is a regular visitor of Soul World. For a time, he was a protector of the Soul Gem, the comic book name for the Infinity Stones. Comic Gamora has also been inside Soul World multiple times. A part of her soul lived in Soul World for a number of years. There are also a lot of different entities inhabiting Soul World, including alien species of all shapes and sizes who are stuck within the dimension. So if Thanos was able to clear his conscience after his dire deed, what about Tony Stark? As we saw in Endgame, Tony wrestled the gems from past Thanos. Previously, the Hulk had used the gauntlet to restore all the lives wiped out by Thanos' snap. However, this took a massive toll on Professor Hulk, or Doc Green if you know the comics. His arm was seriously damaged due to the massive amount of energy the Six Stones possess, eliminating him as an option for using the gauntlet again. As most of the MCU's big guns were unable to use the gauntlet for one reason or another, it fell to Iron Man to save everyone. This time, Tony used the Infinity Stones to dust Thanos and his forces, stopping them from using the stones to wipe out half of the universe again. Yet once Iron Man had done this, his consciousness didn't leave him for a moment. Or did it? No, it, it didn't. At least not in the cinematic release of Avengers Endgame. The directors behind Infinity War and Endgame have shared some of their secrets on various podcasts since Endgame's release. The Russo brothers have provided snippets of information to fill in some of the film's plot holes. One podcast they appeared on in particular was Josh Horowitz's Happy Sad Confused podcast. On there, Joe and Anthony Russo disclaimed what was originally meant to happen to our metallic hero, as well as who Catherine Langford of 13 Reasons Why fame was cast as in Endgame. A year prior to Endgame's release, it was announced that Langford would have a role. Yet when the film was released, there was no sign of her. The brothers revealed that as Iron Man saves everyone, a scene was cut from the final edit. This scene would have shown what Tony saw in Soul World. His consciousness would have met up with Morgan Stark, his daughter, in a similar parallel to what Thanos experienced in Infinity War. Although this version of Morgan was going to be older than the five-year-old he knew. This is where Catherine Langford comes into play. Langford was meant to portray the older Morgan, putting Morgan around her mid-twenties. The father and daughter would have an emotional scene in which she forgives her father for his dire action. Even though he did save the universe, Tony won't be around to see his daughter grow up. In this instance, he gets a glimpse of the woman his daughter will become. Morgan eases Tony's guilt before he snaps back to reality as he slowly perishes from the sacrifice he made. The reason for this scene being cut was down to the confusion from the test audience. A new character suddenly being aged up didn't resonate with them, regardless of the emotional connection between the father and daughter. Because of this, the Russos felt the film was already complicated enough, so they just decided to cut it from the cinematic release. But have no fear. The scene is rumored to be included in the extra features for the DVD and Blu-ray release of Endgame. As we saw in the cinema, we were treated to a dramatic scene even without the quick trip to Soul World. After Tony had done the ultimate sacrifice to rid the universe of Thanos, his body slowly succumbed to the Infinity Gauntlet's immense power. Pepper Potts, the love of his life and mother of Morgan, was there to comfort the fallen hero. She consoled her husband and told him that he could rest now, which to some degree would have eased the guilt Tony had had at that moment. However, this may make the scene with Morgan redundant in a way. Including too many heartfelt moments of his family relieving Tony's guilt may have been too much. 
Perhaps this is another factor that convinced the Russo brothers to drop the older Morgan scene. Pepper even managed to stay strong for Tony as he slipped away, keeping the passing hero's guilt to a minimum. As Pepper Potts was important at Tony's side at his end, and Morgan was the original recipient, this also makes us wonder if Tony would have met with anyone else in Soul World. Over his 11-year stay in the MCU, Tony Stark has met a number of characters that have made an impression on him. One such character includes his fellow captive in the first Iron Man film, Yinsen. He helped Tony through being a prisoner before losing his life. Don't waste your life. Without Yinsen, there likely wouldn't be an Iron Man. Another possible character would be Harley Keener. We saw him pop up briefly at Tony's funeral. He was the young, science-loving boy from Iron Man 3 that helped Tony restore his armor. That's way cooler! No, it's not. Or even Happy Hogan. We haven't seen a lot of Tony and Happy interacting in recent years, but Tony hasn't forgotten one of his closest friends. Especially now that Happy will take Morgan under his wing and give her cheeseburgers. Speaking of children, how about Iron Man's somewhat adoptive son, Spider-Man? That's not a hug, I'm just grabbing the door for you. We're not, we're not there yet. Tony was broken when Peter Parker was one of the victims of Thanos' dusting. He felt as though he had let him down. Tony saw a lot of potential in Peter, so having one last chance to say a proper goodbye may have been nice. And finally, we have Rhodey. Besides from changing his appearance between Iron Man and Iron Man 2, Rhodey has been a great ally to Tony. He strapped on his War Machine armor and helped his friend in troubled waters. Any of these other interactions in Soul World would have been a beautiful finale for Tony's last moments. Beyond who Tony saw in Soul World, how about what he saw? When Thanos jumped into Soul World, he met Gamora in a minimalistic, picturesque landscape. Thanos' character fits this image due to him wanting to remove excess life. However, this doesn't necessarily mean Iron Man and older Morgan were stationed in the exact same spot. The MCU Soul World may work differently depending on who used the Soul Stone. So Tony may have seen a harsh environment that resembles the comics version, or even something more closely resembled to the mind of Stark. As a self-confessed futurist, Stark's environment may have used technological elements, such as massive buildings, robotics, or even an area similar to his Iron Man laboratory. Or it could be more related to what he experienced in the last five years. Perhaps Tony and Morgan would meet at the cabin they were living at away from public life, in particular down near the trees when Morgan was in the tent. It would give a good insight into Tony's psyche at that moment in time. This is something we'll have to wait and see to be confirmed once the deleted scene is officially released. The cutscene does offer an interesting prospect for the future of Marvel's cinematic adventures, though. With Catherine Langford's role not being in the final edit, this could lead to a couple of options for the MCU. One option is that in the future, Langford will reprise the role of adult Morgan. In the MCU at the moment, Morgan is around five years old, so she's a little too young to step into the metal armor. It would have to be a very long wait, or there might be a way to quickly make Morgan older. This can probably be explored either through some magical or science means. Or even using the MCU's new favorite toy, time travel. From there, adult Morgan could follow her father and create her own legend. She may even fill the Iron Man void left in the Avengers. The second option is to hand Langford a different part. Langford's acting obviously impressed Marvel, in order to be cast in the first place. If they decided not to pursue the adult Morgan Avenue, then a new part is the next best choice. As the Young Avengers film rumor is waggling tongues, fingers across the internet, Langford could be thrust into a role there. Kate Bishop could be a great character for Langford. Bishop takes up the identity of Hawkeye in the comics. When Clint Barton is missing or being Ronin, Kate is gifted the Hawkeye responsibility by Captain America. Since then, Barton and Bishop have made a great team. Just don't call her Hawkat. Of course, that depends on whether Hawkeye's daughter Lila Barton takes up the role instead of introducing Kate Bishop. Due to Endgame, we now have an older Cassie Lang to jump into the Young Avengers thanks to the five-year jump when her father, Scott Lang, was freed from the Quantum Realm. In the comics, Ant-Man's daughter takes on the identity of stature when the Young Avengers are formed. The cutscene does bring to the table an often overlooked aspect of Tony Stark's character. Throughout the MCU's history, Tony has regularly heard harsh comments about his character, such as accusations that Tony was selfish or that he's nothing without his armor. Big man in a suit of armor. On top of that, he's been frightened of aliens, thanks Chitari, and suffered with PTSD and anxiety. Yet when all is said and done, it was Stark that made the ultimate sacrifice for the universe. Something which may have been referenced during the removed final scene with adult Morgan. Tony has changed a lot since the birth of the MCU. Over 11 years, Stark's character has morphed into a beacon of what it is to be a hero. If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it. This final scene may have offered some closure for our broken hero. 
Tony Stark even hung up his mask for five years once current Thanos met his end. He moved away from the brash persona he regularly showed the world. Instead, he quietly retired with his wife and raised their daughter. Tony then had two people that he would do anything to protect, which in some degree influenced his decision at the end. Due to the scene being cut, Iron Man didn't get to have the guilt of leaving his family eased by adult Morgan. He may have made a massive sacrifice, but does that make it okay for him to leave his family? Only Tony and his family could say, but he did at least spend his final moments with his wife and his friends, knowing that he had saved them all. Do you agree, or should Endgame have kept the scene with older Morgan? What MCU role can you see Katherine Langford play in the future? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest Screen Rant content. We'll see you next time, Marvel fans.